Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott. And in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Hello Pal stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. This is my first sponsored video. It's sponsored by Hello Pal. Hello Pal is a live streaming social media app where strangers connect to learn each other's language for travel, making friends, or for dating. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and was founded in 1986. It went public in 1996 and currently trades in Canada, ticker HP. We're gonna look at the ticker that trades in Canada, so all the numbers in this video are in Canadian dollars. The company also trades on the pink sheets in the United States, ticker HLLPF, and on the Deutsche Bourse, ticker 27H. It has 5.4 million users and has 15,000 daily live stream videos. Users are in over 200 countries. Its technology allows users to automatically translate both voice and text messages into almost any language. I downloaded the app yesterday. I planned on using it for maybe 5 or 10 minutes just to see how it worked. But after 2 hours, I got addicted. It is so fun to use. Because all the people I spoke to did not speak English. But with their translation feature, I could understand everything they were saying. It was so cool. The company also has features where users can purchase machines to mine crypto. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 231 million market cap. They're trading at 166 a share and they have 139 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company does have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income every year. This company was pre-revenue until 2020 when sales were 1 million then sales jumped ninefold to 9 million in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Then below that is gross profit. They had positive gross profit in a trailing 12 months, negative in 2020. Below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. So they do have negative operating income every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments, investments, or other non-operational gains and losses. Then below that is pre-tax income, which is negative every year. Then their taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year. This is their quarterly income statement from February 2020 to November 2020. You can see revenue growing at a rapid pace. The first quarter on this chart, $639,000 of revenue. It doubled to $1.2 million. It more than doubled to $3.1 million. Then it went up about 50% to $4.5 million. So they're doing a really good job at growing their revenue. Of course, they're investing right back into their business to grow it, so they don't have any net income. This is their monthly revenue from their website. You can see in January, February, March, April, it was below half a million. Then in May, they had their first month over half a million. In July, they had their first month over $1 million of revenue. December, it went to $2 million. The following month, it was close to $3 million of monthly revenue. If they keep growing at this pace, they're going to be a really big company one day. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. The company has negative free cash flow every year. 
so they need debt and equity to run their business. In 2018, they issued $700,000 of stock. In 2020, they issued $140,000. When a company issues stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They also issue debt each year, $100,000, $600,000, $140,000, and $50,000. In the most recent quarter, they had positive free cash flow. They had $288,000 of operating cash flow, plus they invested $65,000 in CapEx, so they had over $200,000 of free cash flow. That's really exciting that they had their first positive free cash flow quarter. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $1.4 million of equity, $200,000 of debt. So they're 85% equity, 15% debt. Their net debt is negative $200,000, so they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $200,000 of cash left over. Their WAC is 14.3%, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 2.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.5 billion. We divide that by 139 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $10.90. They're trading at 166, so they're trading at an 85% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is more than twice as high as me. They're at $22 a share. They're saying the stock is extremely undervalued. I estimated their future free cash flow growth by building out their subscriber base into the future and their revenue from that. And I tried to be conservative and I'm still coming up with a stock price well above what they're trading at. This is a stock price the last five years. So you can see it was pretty flat for a while. But then the past couple of weeks, the stock price has really been driven up. Here's a recent news article. The company acquires interest in Dogecoin and Litecoin mining facilities and mining assets. So what they're buying is a 15% interest in a crypto mining facility located in Northwest China with an option to increase their interest to 35%. If they're successful in making money with this, they will likely increase it up to 35%. They're also getting a 51% interest in mining rigs dedicated to mining Dogecoin and Litecoin. And they do have the option to increase that to 100%. And this will be a minimum of 12,500 mining rigs with an additional $2,500 more at no extra cost. This company is a really high beta, 4.12, so the stock moves more than four times the market. It's really volatile. The stock has gone up almost 2,000% in the past 52 weeks, which is better than the S&P 500, which went up 33%. The 52-week low was 5 cents, the high was 233, and the stock is trading well above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. 1 to 3 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 139 million shares outstanding, 120 million are on float, and less than one half of 1% of the shares are shorted. The three biggest shareholders are individuals who started or work at the company. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 8.5, the median is 13.7, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 24.6. So investors are paying about $25 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 170. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 70% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets as of their last published balance sheet are half a million of cash, 180,000 of receivables, and 300,000 of prepaid assets. The company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative $700,000 of free cash flow, negative $500,000 of working capital. 
So they have negative 1.2 million of funding. But if they have positive free cash flow in 2021, that will wipe out the negative. Or they could issue debt or issue stock to fund their business. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 24 companies in the same industry as Hello Pal. And if Hello Pal has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they have a big negative. They are doing a little better on price to sales than the average. They're doing worse in price to book. They don't have a good current ratio. They have a terrible ROE. They are doing better in debt than average at 15%. Average is 28%. But they're a really small company, only 231,000 market cap. The average company when converted to Canadian dollars is 50 billion. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 85% discount. But this company has a really exciting product. Most other social media apps connect friends to each other. People on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you generally know those people and interact with them. But on this app, you don't know anybody and you're meeting all new people. It's just a different spin on things which makes them different. Of course, there's risk in any investment. There could be another company or maybe even Facebook that does something similar. But the big companies have not had any success with translating languages like this company has. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10 because they're negative every year. I rank their revenue 8 out of 10 because it grew so much in a trailing 12 months. And I rank their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.